if you want to really, really find a good store of value, you know, that's assets and real estate is, you know, top. Okay. Having said that, you go into a real estate deal, you have to, you have to exercise the let the buyer beware, you know, the caveat emptor. Do your due diligence, do the inspection, you know, if you got to do septic tank in inspection, if you got to look at the electrical, if it's cloth wiring, I mean, all these things, you got to make sure that you've inspected everything. As an operator, I know other investors are romanticizing multifamily investing, and I'm looking to learn from other investors' mistakes. I know you are too, and you found the right place. Welcome to Myers Methods Presents Multifamily Missteps. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Multifamily Missteps. I'm your host, Jerome, and I have Ayel Joshua with me today. How are things down in Florida, my brother? Oh, man, it's a sunny day today, you know? <laughs> Isn't it always sunny in Florida? Come on. Well, not always, but today it's really sunny. It's a nice day. Uh, good to be out. Wow. So this is your first podcast episode. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to do this with you, man. Yeah. What, what is your background? Let's give the listeners a little bit about how you got into multifamily investing. Well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer by profession, if you will, electrical engineer. You know, I spent a lot of time with, uh, with television engineering, uh, with, um, with uh, what's it called, OTT, you know, over the top video. But um, I started my multifamily or my, my real estate career back about, what, 15 years ago, purchased a couple of condos and uh, progressed from that to uh, fourplexes, and uh, now I even have a seven-unit building as well. Wow, okay. So all local, like in your backyard or? All local, yeah. So what, some people are like, man, why would you ever invest in your own backyard? Why do you wanna invest close to where you are? Uh, first of all, because I wanna be close to where my assets are. That's the first thing. Uh, the other thing is I decided or we, I mean, my wife and I are partners in this. Uh, we decided to uh, self-manage. So, um, and you know, uh, uh, property management is great. And if you can get a, a, a property manager, it's wonderful. Of course, you know, then you're completely passive. But uh, we wanted to get into the management also to kind of, uh, you know, enlarge our margins. But uh, also it's, it's, it's good to understand how property management, management works. So that's what we did. Okay. And so you manage the property still or? Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of work. <laughs> Without question. Okay. So so a lot of people feel like they just buy the deal throw the keys over the fence and it's done they don't have to worry about anything as the property manager for your own portfolio you get to see all of the good the bad and the ugly so oh. i'm assuming that all of your deals haven't gone perfectly oh no <laughs> not at all <laughs> not okay. at all because 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 in the long term it's 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 great to have real estate assets especially today with all the inflation you know roger no that. better store of value roger that so i mean if for the listeners out there they're wondering well what 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 should i know what mistakes have you made that i should never make and so what do you got from any of these deals? And even as an operator of the property yourself, man, I can't believe you self-managed yours, right, man. Um, you know what? It all starts when, when you're purchasing the property, it all starts with your due diligence, you know? And uh, you, you go into your due diligence period and you've got the inspection coming in um, and they inspect the electrical and the roof and the plumbing and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
it's kind of uh, a bit of a problem with plumbing, for instance, uh, especially with all the properties. Uh, some of these properties have cast iron pipes, which is, you know, if you don't know how to deal with that, that's a problem. Um, the other thing is you've got, you've got some properties that have, uh, that, that are not connected to the city sewer. So they have septic tanks and many people don't do the septic tank inspection. Sometimes that's critical. So, so did you find out the hard way that septic tank inspections are important? Oh yeah. So, you know, I bought a fourplex, a fourplex in uh, Hollywood, which is, you know, where kind of where I live, Hollywood, Florida. Um, and uh, the building, it, it was actually four separate units and there were two septic tanks over there. And we knew that this was this, the, the, there were septic tanks. We brought the inspection inspector in and, you know, they inspect the pipes, they inspect the electrical, everything is fine, everything is good. Uh, they found problems, of course. Um, and I said, boy, do I need to inspect the septic tanks? And, you know, I was told, well, you know, they're okay. You don't have to really do anything with them. They just sit there. Uh, we purchased the property and boy, was I wrong <laughs> because right away we had problems. So, so what, what is, what is, so they inspected the pipes inside of the actual units, but they didn't go all the way out to the septic. Exactly. And, and, and so you know, mm -hmm, go ahead. would would they like dig up the septic field and do it out there or do they just run something through the pipe from inside the house? Like how how does this actually get checked oh, okay. out? How do yeah. So 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 what you do is you can order a separate septic inspection, you know, it costs you more money. And then what I believe they do is they, yeah, they run a camera through the drain pipe. But they may also um, go look for the septic tank, which, you know, there's a technique of doing that. You kind of go poke holes and then you find the septic tank and then you actually open it up and you look and you see if it's overloaded, over, you know, overflowing, if there's a problem. And then there's, there's one component about a septic tank, which many people don't know about, and that's what's called a drain field. And the drain field is where all the water kind of drains out and, you know, the chemicals, uh, they uh, make all the, you know, the bad stuff disintegrate, but you still got to drain all the water. And if the drain field is no good, the water just stays in the tank. And that causes issues. Ouch. Yes. So... What did it cost to get this fixed? Okay. So, like I said, we had, we had, the, there were four freestanding units in this fourplex, two septic tanks servicing, you know, two units. What we had to do was, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. One of the, one of the, the two units had separate septic tanks. Okay. Two units had separate septic tanks. Uh, one of the tanks, uh, they went in after we purchased, they inspected the tank, they said, you know, your tank is bad, your drain field is gone. Okay, how much would it cost to, uh, to, put, to put in a new drain field? You know, that's thousands of dollars. As a matter of fact, if you need to replace a tank, that's thousands of dollars. So what they did was, hey, let's look at the other septic tank. Let's see if it has enough capacity for the two units. Mm -hmm. So again, according to whatever tables they do, you know, they figured out that, yeah, what they can do is they can run a drain pipe from one of the units into the other unit septic tank, and there'll be enough capacity. But again, I mean, that also costs money. I mean, you gotta run a line, you gotta dig, you gotta run a line and all that. So yeah, we didn't have to pay thousands of dollars for the drain field, but we still had to dig up and connect the other septic tank. Again, costly mistake. If I would have done my due diligence correctly and brought in a septic tank inspection, you know, then, hey, Mr. Owner, you got to fix this before I purchase the property. 
A lot of people want to be profitable multifamily operators, but lack the knowledge, deal flow, experience, and capital to be successful. They often try to overcome these challenges out of order, slowing or eliminating their ability to get the next deal done. We have developed a framework that allows them to gain the knowledge they need to find profitable deals. When they use our system, they create time and location freedom, as well as the generational wealth they desire for their family. The Multifamily Kickstart program has proven to be the fastest way to establish credibility and build a profitable apartment portfolio. Hop over to JeromeMyers.co to find out more. Yep. So what gave you the confidence to move forward, just not knowing that it was that big of a risk? Because, I mean, are we talking $1,000 or are we talking $10,000 to get something like this corrected? I would say that that putting putting in another drain field, I think is like five thousand dollars, maybe. Okay. Um, a- again, when we figured out that we can do a bypass to the other septic tank, it didn't. It ended up costing maybe I don't know, fifteen hundred or two thousand dollars. Still a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the units are renting for, but you wiped out a few months of rent, I would assume. Exactly. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. do you like, will you buy any more properties that aren't connected to city water and sewer? You know what? Let me, let me, let me tell you this. Um, We've got, we've got a couple of other fourplexes. Okay. Each of those fourplexes, city water and sewer is about, you know, three hundred dollars a month. You know how much I pay for this one with the septics? Sixty dollars, just for just for water supply, really. Sixty dollars. So is it worth it? Oh yeah. Now you got to figure. You got to do that. That uh, you got to do a tank. Uh, what's it called? You know, they come in and they they drain pump the whole the tank. tank out. Yeah, they got to pump um, it. That costs, I think, what like eight hundred dollars or five. You know, I, I forget what it is, but you do that every like you know once in three years. Yeah. So yeah, it's worth it. It is worth it. I mean, when it when it comes to your net operating income, and so as you're looking at the values go up and so on and so forth. And, and this is this is interesting. It, it becomes really interesting for me, right? So, for a, from a comp standpoint, like, does this impact the desirability of your property compared to you know something else that somebody else would look at? Like, are buyers going to be ro- torn away or turned off because you're on septic? And mm-hmm. do you have the option to make it on city sewer now at this point since you have water there? Okay, so so there is no option right now, but the city of Hollywood is really expanding, uh, you know. Uh, so at some point, they're going to connect us. Um, but on the other hand, people do shy away from septic tanks, you know, for whatever reason. They feel like you know the city is much better at at you know draining my poop. <laughs> if you will, <laughs> I don't want to deal with, uh, you know, a septic tank uh, guy coming in and cleaning it out again, you know, to each his own. Um, but you got to figure also, if you, if you have a septic tank and you're in a city where they're going to be expanding and they're going to force you to connect, then you've got impact fees and then you've got the work that you got to do. I mean, that could be thousands of dollars as well. So figure that as well. Wow. Wow. So if you had to do it all over again, would you do it? Well, first of all, I would do the inspection. But you know what? Yeah, I would. I would. I I think I would, too, based on what you just told me, because if you're spending four hundred dollars a month, if I got that right, that's that's. Sounds a little high, but four hundred dollars a month on city water and sewer, and you're able to get that expense down to sixty dollars a month. You you end up in a really, really good spot. Unless the only other thing that I think you could do to maybe bring the cost down more is individually meter each unit, and then have the residents set up their own accounts. Oh but, yeah, yeah. 
without a doubt. And, and that's the ideal situation. And, you know, there are, there are properties out there with, which are individually metered. Um, you won't find that in the older ones, uh, especially over here in, in the city of Hollywood, even, you know, in the city of Fort Lauderdale around here. I don't know how it is elsewhere in the country. Um, so individual metered is the, is the best way to go. But uh, barring that, you know, septic tanks are more economical. Without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. the uh, I think it depends on who builds it, right? If a investor is the builder of the property, they're going to wow. individually meter it because they know what the long term impact to income is not having to pay those utilities. If a builder builds it, they're going to do what's cheapest for them so they can make the most profit they can make on the exit. So, oh, yeah, that. That is what I've seen, and I've seen it done both ways. I've actually got two quads that sit next to each other on a contiguous lot, uh -huh. and they all they have one meter into all eight. So I have to pay water for all of them because in North Carolina, you can't do the rubs, the ratio utility billing system. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Yeah, so unless we separately meter our stuff, we we got to pay it, and you know. It, for us, it's a whole lot cheaper than what you described. We're at about $40 per unit per month, maybe 50 oh. on a bad month. So, you know, those those costs seem a little rich. I, I don't know what's going on with the flappers in the toilet or if any faucets are dripping, but you might want to go in and see if there's any leaks or, you know, open pieces in your system so you can get that $400 down. But water may just be more expensive down there. The, um, oh, no. you, you bring up a, a great point about about the flappers and about you know shower heads and all that and that's that's on my list as, uh, as a matter of fact to go in and start analyzing yeah 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 so i mean this is this right here just makes me grin man you're the first person i've talked to that had a property that's multifamily with septic you know i i had a country house at one point and we had a septic and when we exited that deal in 2021, they made us do an inspection of the septic system before the new owner could buy it. It was a requirement of the transaction. So this is really cool to see it come full circle and see that somebody could actually get tripped up by something like that because it's not a requirement. Yeah, yeah, better watch out, you know. <laughs> Well, I always like to ask one final question on these podcasts, and, and the question is, what's the words of wisdom that you have for our listeners? They're out here, they're fighting the good fight, they're trying to make a positive impact on the community and put a little bit of money in their pocket. You know, first of all, if, if, if you want to really, really find a good store of value, you know, that's assets and real estate is, you know, top. Okay. Having said that, you go into a real estate deal, you have to, you have to exercise the let the buyer beware, you know, the caveat emptor. Do your due diligence, do the inspection, you know, if you got to do septic tank inspection, if you got to just look at the electrical, if it's cloth wiring, I mean, all these things. You got to make sure that you've inspected everything, you know, get a, get a, get a roofing inspector, you know, get people, especially in the, in the bigger, you know, properties, the, the 10 units, the 15 units, you know, uh, and, and over and over. So you got to get all these experts in to inspect the property correctly. Um, but then, you know, go ahead and do it. You know, don't sit there, go ahead and do it. <laughs> so what you're saying is get wise counsel from experts so that you know that you're in a good position when you're taking possession of the property and yeah. take action, right? Oh, yeah. Buy real estate and wait. No, yeah. And and don't wait for markets to tank or to go up or to go down. You know, just find the right deal and go for it. Wow. Wow. So <laughs> I, that was supposed to be the last question, but I can't resist. How do you know if the deal is right? You know, if you're you're looking for your next deal, what what do you want? How do you know it's the right deal? 
you got to look at the numbers. You know, you, you got to look at uh, at at uh, especially for me. I mean, I look on cash. I I look for cash flow. So you got to look at your cash on cash returns. Um, you got to make sure that the deal is in in a good class building in a you know okay class area. All right. I you know I do affordable housing. I think that uh, you know we need to offer people all people. Uh, a good place to rent, you know, where they're not spending all their money. Um, but uh, you, you, you got to be able to know to, you know, which area you're going to, uh, to purchase. If the numbers look right. Um, you know, maybe the first year it's going to be a little bit, you know, you know, wanky, but then at some point, you're going to you're going to make good you're going to make good for yourself you're going to make good for the people that you're renting to i'm so glad i asked this question because you're a man after my own heart i think everybody deserves a quality safe place to live and Absolutely. a lot of times it's more lure, it's it's more interesting to go serve wealthy people or people who can pay a higher price but the fact of the matter is the people who actually make the world go round are those folks who are living in you know, that workforce housing. So brother, I'm so grateful to meet your acquaintance and have somebody else down there in South Florida who I can call when I'm down there trying to catch some rays on a nice sunny day in the middle of winter. <laughs> All right, and to the listeners, the pack is with you. We'll talk soon. You made it to this juncture, so you really love what we shared on this episode of Myers Methods Presents Multifamily Missteps. Do us a favor, give us a five-star rating, give us a review, and share this with somebody who's interested in multifamily investing. Until the next time, the pack is with you.